this is uh, a Unit 4 WJCA level physics question. This is from the 2017 June paper, and it's actually the first question on the paper. The question talks about a parallel plate capacitor which has got a capacitance of 8 nanofarads, and the plates are separated by 0.2 millimeters of air, and we're asked to calculate the length of the size of the plates. So let's start with C equals epsilon naught A over D, which is our formula for the parallel plate capacitor. To find A, first of all, we can rearrange to give C D over epsilon naught, but also remember that A here will be X squared, where X is the variable that we're trying to find. So X is going to be equal to the square root of C D over epsilon naught. Substitution of figures, the capacitance 8 nanofarad, so 8 times 10 to the minus 9. D 0.2 millimeters, so don't forget the conversion to meters, and epsilon naught 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Substituting those into the calculator, you'll end up with 0.425 meters, or if you prefer, 42.5 centimeters. The next part of the question asks us to work out which combination of capacitors will give us a total capacitance of 12 nanofarads. Well, we can very quickly discard some of the answers. So, for example, uh, the setup number one, capacitors in series we have to add up with reciprocals. So we'd have 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8, giving 3 over 8. And remember to flip that upside down, we get 8 over 3 nanofarads, which is clearly not number or not 12 nanofarads, so definitely not number one. Capacitors in parallel simply add up, so we got 3 eighths given 24, so that one doesn't work. With the arrangement for number three, first of all do the two parallel capacitors, the two eighths will give us a 16, then we'd have one over 16 plus one over eight, which is the same as one over 16 plus two over 16, three over 16, and if we flip that upside down, again, we don't get the answer of 12. So it must be combination number four, but let's show the workings. So the first bit is if we work out the capacitance of the series arrangement, it's going to be 1 over 8 plus 1 over 8, which is 2 over 8, or a quarter, and that means that the series arrangement is 4 nanofarads. And then simply the total capacitance will be that 4 nanofarads plus the 8 nanofarads, which it's in parallel with, giving us the correct answer of 12 nanofarads. So the correct answer is the arrangement number four. Next we're asked to state how we can change the capacitance of the capacitor or increase the capacitance without changing its dimensions. That means we can't change anything to do with the sides. But if we think back to the parallel plate formula where we have epsilon naught because there was a, a vacuum or air between the plates, we can simply increase the capacitance by adding a dielectric maybe a piece of plastic or something between the plates. Next we're asked to calculate the charge on the plates of the 8 nanofarad capacitor when it stores an energy of 0.62 microjoules. Well here we can use this version of the energy stored formula in the capacitor. Remember that's not given to you in the data book. You have to rearrange or combine together u equals a half qv and Q equals CV to be able to get this relationship. Once we've got this relationship, to find the charge, it's going to be 2UC and square rooted. So square root of 2 times 0.62 microjoules times 8 nanofarads. Typing that into your calculator, we end up with 9.96 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. The next part of the question talks about a capacitor being discharged through a large resistor. And we've got to calculate the resistance if the time constant is 15.5 milliseconds. Well, this is just a matter of remembering that the time constant, sometimes given a symbol tor or t, a sort of curly T is R times C. So if we're trying to find the resistance, the resistance is a time constant over C. So we've got 15.5 milliseconds 
divided by the capacitance of the 8 nanofarads. And substituted that into a calculator gives us an answer of 1.94 million ohms or 1.94 mega ohms. Next we need to calculate the fraction of the initial charge remaining on the capacitor after 31 milliseconds. Well if you look carefully you'll realise that 31 milliseconds is two time constants and after one time constant the charge remaining on the capacitor is Q0 over E. So after two time constants is Q0 over E squared. If we do 1 over E squared we basically get 0.135. And that will be the answer to the question. We can give it as 0.135 or 13.5%. For part C of the question, one of those 8 nanofarad capacitors, which is initially uncharged, is charged using the circuit given, using the same resistor from earlier. In other words, the time constant is still 15.5 milliseconds. We have to sketch graphs of the charge on the plates of the capacitor against time. To do so, we can use the charging formula which is provided in the data booklet where Q equals Q0 1 minus E to the minus T over RC. In one time constant the charge built up will be roughly 63% of the maximum charge. So what we need as I've already drawn here is a line with a positive gradient but that gradient decreases and after 15 or so milliseconds then we're looking at something like 63% charged. For the discharge of, uh, sorry, for the current against time, the current decreases as time goes by. The current is always described by the equation I equals I naught E to the minus T over RC. The current always starts high and gets lower and lower as it gets harder and harder for electrons to move from one plate of the capacitor to the other. And after a time constant, after again about 15 milliseconds, we will be down to 37%, roughly speaking, of the original charge. Thank you for listening.